everybody to Wednesday night Dynamite The Dynamite Smash Review The last Dynamite on TNT And the last Dynamite of 2021 You're in the Hit that like button and stick the thumb directly up my ass If you can Chris Jericho with the return tonight. Man, I got some wild stuff to talk about maybe in a few minutes, but what an opening reaction from the crowd back at Daly's place. It's like a big reunion that reminds us of the pandemic, which that's not necessarily good, but hey. What up to OMT? It was a solid show tonight, I think. William Belcher's here. Sammy Bear King, get wet. Shell's here. D. Welsh is here. Mecca Sandwich is here. Derek Johnson is here. Had to stand outside a COVID testing clinic today. That's not good. Matt Action, solid 7 out of 10. Jim Ross back in the house. Jim Ross fire. What an intro by Jim Ross, man. He was like, you know what that means. And the crowd popped, bro. It was great. Let's listen to that right now. Jim Ross was a, what a light. Yeah, you're not kidding, man. And the other thing I want to say right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's Wednesday night. And you know what that means. It's Wednesday night. Let's get it on tonight. I mean, that was one of my, uh, that, that's one of the better, like, intros to a show of the entire year. You know what I mean? Just Jim Ross standing up there being like, I'm back. Let's get it on. And then the Jungle Boy music comes on. You know, and that was fire. That was, I was hyped up at the beginning of this show tonight. Let me tell you that j- little Jim Ross pep talk real quick. Oh God, it felt great. It really felt good, man. It was a great way to begin the night. It was a great way to start AEW Dynamite. And, you know, I don't think the rest of the night too much other than, you know, like maybe for a second Jericho coming back. I thought Eddie Kingston coming out. You know, that was exciting. I thought Eddie Kingston's music and the excitement he brought, I thought he did a good job, did Eddie Kingston. You know, there was a couple of spurts of real big excitement for me. Even Brandy Rhodes, I was kind of excited for that. You know, I kind of wanted to see her beat up Dan Lambert, to be honest. Um, But, you know, I I don't, I don't know, I'd never problem with Brandy. I know some people thought she was cringy. They were like, oh, here we go with cringy, you know, Brandy or whatever. I you know I, don't, I thought she was all right. I kind of like when she gets crazy on the mic. I like it a lot better than her like passive aggressive, you know, crybaby tweets and stuff like that. I prefer Brandy when she's like, "I'll beat the shit out of you. I'm crazy. I'm a crazy wife." I like the crazy wife that will beat up anybody who talks about their husband. I think that that's fiery. It's fun. You know what I mean? So I thought it was a good dynamite tonight. You know, this wasn't anything crazy, special, insane. It it didn't really necessarily live up to the last ever. You know, maybe there would have been something bigger that went down in my you know estimation. But it, you know, it, I was hoping for an eight or a nine. Obviously, you always hope for that eight or nine or ten. You don't see a ten usually, but from anything. But uh, you know, I think this is a solid six out of ten tonight, which is which is which is good. That's good. A nice solid six out of ten, which you know that makes me happy. Seeing Jim Ross back, you know, that gives you a big smile on your face. Let me go to the poll. We got a poll up right now. And right now we got 158 votes. And people are saying it's good. Good show tonight. AW score for tonight. Amazing, 22%. I mean, that's weird to me, but that's okay. Some people saying, most people saying good. Some people said blah, and a couple said terrible. But most of you guys uh, giving it a good score and a thumbs up either way. It's about, uh, what is that, 70, 80 five, six, seven, eighty seven percent positive from you guys. So that's really that's good. That's what you want. This is a good rated a decent rated show. It was a good show. It wasn't a like I said, it wasn't anything over the top, insane, amazing, like, oh my God, you know, I'm gonna freak out. But it was uh it was it was good. And that's that's what it needed to be. And that's all it had to be and that's what it was and so that's awesome. That's fine. 
New Year's Smash was a AEW New Year's Smash. The last episode of 2021, uh, Clambake says, great show, first live wrestling I've watched in months. Definitely enjoyed it. Yeah, you can definitely enjoy this so much more than you can Raw. You know, I mean, when you watch Raw, you feel like you're being, your soul is being ripped out of you and you're being bored to tears, bored to death, just slowly murdered by life, by three hours of a waste of time. And coming here to AEW Dynamite, you feel so much better. Because, you know, when you give Raw a 2 or 3 out of 10, it's not just that it's a 2 or 3 out of 10. It's a 2 or 3, but you watched it for 3 hours. You spent 3 hours watching a F- minus on a Monday night. That's one of the biggest things. You spent 3 hours on an F-, minus, and it just highlights how terrible it is. But tonight on AEW, you get a 6 out of 10. You get a... I don't even know what that is, a C-minus or something. You get a C-minus or a C-plus show tonight, in my opinion, a C-plus probably, And but it's two hours. So a C-plus feels like a B-plus because it's two hours, whereas you know, on Raw, you know, an F or a D feels like just death. Feels like a didn't try zero out of ten, just pillaging. How about Brian Pillman Jr. tonight sounding like his dad a bit on the microphone? Sounding like himself, but also with a little hint of the loose cannon coming through, that was, without a doubt, Brian, Pillman's ju- Brian Pillman Jr.'s best promo I have ever heard him cut. Tonight, Brian Pillman Jr. cut his best ever promo. Now, maybe there's a promo on the indies or somewhere that I've missed that I didn't see, and then that's on me, I guess, if that's the case. But tonight, Brian Pillman Jr. cut the best promo He's ever cut in AEW, and he had a hint of his dad on the microphone as well as basically being himself. This guy did a great job tonight of cutting a promo. He, he's He's been all right at times, sort of, and shaky, or just kind of green, but all right. You know, younger guy learning, but he's got the blood of wrestling in him. But tonight, Brian Pillman Jr. officially cut his first ever solid promo or his like he felt like like if I had never seen him cut other promos before and he had just cut this promo tonight I would have said wow yeah he's got that he's got that talent so look out because you know this reminds me of he used to he used to remind me of uh Shawn Michaels early promos in the Rockers and if you look at Shawn Michaels early promos in the Rockers they were a bit rough goofy and you know whatever and then around the end of the Rockers to the beginning of the Heartbreak Kid stuff, he really started getting better. And this reminds me of that here tonight from Brian Pillman Jr. For the last three years, I've thought Brian Pillman Jr. was a maybe a 4 or 5 out of 10 promo. Uh, but he stepped up here to a, a solid 6 or 7 here. Uh, you know, in whatever. whatever that ma- It doesn't matter if you give it a 6 or a 7. I'd probably give it a 6, but that's a great 6. It's a great 6. Maybe a seven, even you know. But it's just that he hit that. He got into that realm of, I'm buying what he's selling. That's the first time I've ever bought what he's been selling. Every other time, I'm like, oh, he's just learning. He's getting. He's not the best on the mic. All right, get a manager in there. You know, he's not terrible, but just you know, it's it's hard to take it seriously. Get a manager. He's all right, but tonight that was the first time ever. Step out of the shadow right there, of your former promo self, and not only did he did he. Did he say everything pretty well? But that little inflection of screaming that he had that reminded you of his dad. And it's not about that. It doesn't need to be it's not it's not good because he reminded me of his dad. If he hadn't have if he hadn't have slipped in that that loose cannon Brian Pillman stuff, this still would have been a good promo. It would have been like six out of ten. But when he started getting kind of that fury in there randomly once in a while, but very controlled. He didn't go nuts. What you want me to do? Malachi! Now it is my turn to take a trip to the infamous House of Black, but I'm not gonna come barging in. I'm not gonna kick down your door because I know that is exactly what you want me to do. Now, normally, this would sound terrible. I'm not gonna kick down your door because that's exactly what you want me to do. You know, that's not, that might sound terrible coming delivered the wrong way, 
But because he seems fiery, I believe that's he means what he's saying. Now, I never knew my father. I don't know what kind of man he was. But if I learned one thing from his life, it's that you only get one of them. And I'm not giving you mine! Bro, that is some straight up Brian Pillman and Mankind sounding screaming right there. That really helped the promo. Like, it got so much better, bro. That was really good. Like, I felt that. That was really good, man. You only get one life, and I'm not giving you mine! Like, he was like, dude, he was like mankind. And I'm not giving you mine! Like, it's just, when Mick Foley used to yell, that's what this reminded me of. See, Pillman, Brian Pillman, used to yell the whole promo. He used to be like, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do! Like, and he would just, like, he, the whole promo mostly would be yelling. But this reminded me of Mankind, where Mankind would be like, I'm going to go play in traffic, and I might just tear your head off! And you were like, wow, like, I believe that. And that's what I get out of Brian Pillman Jr. here. This is great stuff. The, possibly the beginning of something great. Now, I never knew my father. I don't know what kind of man he was. But if well, watch the videos. If I learned one thing from his life, it's that you only get one of them. And I'm not giving you mine! Oh, my God. I love that. Huh. I mean, I love that. It, I mean, for him, because before, like I said, he was a 5 out of 10, it's maybe a promo. Very, very green sounding. Very nice guy. Like, I'm just happy to be here. I'm the son of Brian Pillman, but I'm going to do my best. You know, this is a step up from that where he sounds very, very passionate about what he's saying. This is great. And speaking of great, you guys are great. So because you guys are great, I uh, I need I I need to go to the donations and hear what you guys are saying right now because uh, it looks like you guys are speaking some uh, speaking in the chat here. Let's find out what people are saying. You guys can support my show, keep my show on the air, and keep my show going despite all the hate, the anger, and the destruction, and people trying to get rid of me as they've been doing for years. Um. I've been up against it so many times, man, but you guys just won't let it go. So thank you guys for keeping me on the air by becoming patrons on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Thank you to Charlie Z. He became a $10 VIP patron. You now have access to the Discord Gold and everything else, plus all the thousands and thousands of podcasts that I've done that are uncensored on Patreon not heard anywhere else. And I got a special couple of clips that I'm going to play for you in a few minutes of somebody freaking out that's pretty goddamn hilarious. So you're going to want to stick around for that because it is goddamn hilarious. Let me tell you that. The other thing is we're going to go to the donations right now. Thank you guys for supporting. If you want to donate, the link is in the description box down below. You just got to expand the description box down below to go ahead to get access to that. And the link for the Streamlabs and the Stream Elements and the all the other ways and the Super Chats are all in the links in the description box down below. Plus, Shell is always putting them out there for you guys. Thank you to everybody who dropped the Super Thanks on my last video. I saw a couple of them, including one that was $10, man. Thank you for funding that video. Speaking of money, let's hear some. Yeah. Oh, shit, it's turkeys! Oh. What if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? Oh my god, you know they're in your neighborhood. These freaking turkeys are in your neighborhoods trying to eat your children. <laughs> what if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? If the turkeys ate us? If they had to hate us? Thanksgiving was a little bit different Instead the turkeys ate us They gobbled us apart But first they'd eat our nuts And then they'd eat our butt The turkeys ate us What if, what if What if the turkeys ate us Ate us. What if they ate our fucking nuts? 
good Al- Alyssa in Chains is here. Look at the freaking turkeys exploding in the chat. My God, a turkey is AEW champion. It's Wednesday night, and you can gobble my cock. Sorry. Um, oh, Soundwave, your uh, donation got censored. You must have said a naughty word. Um, that's okay, Soundwave. There's nothing to worry about. I can still play your donation. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if we can get uh, Captain Big Ones, our uh, resident uh, deaf person reader. Take it away, Captain Big Ones. What did Soundwave try to say that got censored by Google? Tonight was a solid show, but man, for a final show on TNT, I was expecting more tonight. Everybody was so happy to see Junior back. I don't think anything made me laugh harder than Brandy calling herself a black. Yeah. 6.5, 10 wasn't special, but better than Raw. Yeah, it was definitely nice, man. Um, I I like that you like Brandy. Um, I I thought that part was 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 nice. I thought that her calling herself a black bitch was was funny. And, also, uh, I hate anything brown. Oh. Soundwave, that's not nice. Why would you say that? I mean, what the <laughs> I don't I don't I do not condone that what he just said. Um <laughs> Thank you, Soundwave, for the donation, but Jesus Christ, bro, I don't know. I wanna read Shell's pussy. Oh, come on, let's not. All right, Captain Big Ones, thank you for reading that for me. Um, the hearing impaired. Captain Big Ones has been a part of my channel for 10 years almost, so it's good to hear from him and, uh, you know, supporting me reading the donations. Uh, $29 Turkey's Ate Us donation. That is the top dono of the stream so far. It's the only dono we played, actually, so far. And Soundwave92 is the top dog. You are the top supporter, Soundwave. Thank you. Hit that like button in the chat, guys. Even stick that thumb up my ass. And if you're brand new to my channel, you better be subscribing all the playlists, I'm talking WWE, AEW, all that stuff, live calls, everything. Plus, we're on Patreon with all the content that we have. Um, I put up some audio the other day from the show. Hope you downloaded it, listened to it, whatever you want. You guys are big time. Matt Hardy looking like a used salad in that first match, but that's okay. It was a nice little match. I thought the opener was a nice opener. I thought the crowd most times tonight was was really pretty good. There were a few times where the crowd kind of let it let it down a bit, you know, and it, and it is a smaller crowd. So, there, you know, it's outdoors. It's a smaller crowd. you got to remember this venue is a little bit tough. It's tough in this venue to get to that noise level when there's an open roof. It's an outside crowd. It's a small crowd. So, listen, it, you know, I think they did really pretty good tonight for being back to this lower crowd. I mean, what? I don't know how much Daly's Place holds. Isn't it like 5,000 people? Um, let's see. Now, to be fair, when they go on tour like they've been doing in the arenas, they've really only been selling out about 6,000 seats, right? They've been doing about 6,000 seats. Now, they say they sell out a lot at 10,000, 8,000, and things like that. But let's be honest. The attendance for AEW, wherever they go, tends to be around 5,000 or so. Sometimes four, sometimes six, but usually average 5,000. Well, Daly's Place has a capacity of 5,500. And I think that's about, a th- I want to say it's about 1,000 less than what AEW's been doing every week. I think AEW's been reporting about six to 8,000 every week. And Daly's Place can only carry about 5,500. And that's before you put the wrestling ring in the middle of the crowd where seats usually are sold, I believe. Could be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. So I think their capacity is about 5,000. So that's my guess. I'm just guessing at stuff by looking at the seat charts that it's the capacity when, when AEW is there is only 5,000. I could be wrong, but that being said, that's not bad for an amphitheater. But it's definitely on the lower side when all things are considered, you know? Um, and, it, you know, it is what it is. Super chat. What's up, chat? Oh, yeah. Super chats. Bullfrog on mental lul. Yeah, he's a mental case. Uh, Drop a super chat. Get super whack and fat. I'm going to sap that ass. Uh, Thank you, Second City, saying, yeah, he's a psycho, I guess. I don't know. Um, 
I have some uh, clips uh, that you will enjoy uh, if you mean to be entertained. Christian Cage looking like a uh, looking like a snack. Let me tell you that. Christian Cage, a big time snack. We're going to talk about a lot in a few minutes. Uh, Derek Johnson says, I want to puke and turn off the volume every time that lame Jungle Boy song comes on. Man, really? I love that song. Bro, that, that song is like one of my favorite songs of all time. When I was a little kid, that was that was the theme on Ninja Turtles 3. And I just love that song, bro. I love that song. I, I couldn't be any more wrong, opposite of you, Derek Johnson. I love that song. In fact, I've been a I've I've been a fan of that song forever. And usually people don't even know about that song. You know, Jake always did though. I did. And so when I heard that was gonna be his theme, I was like, oh man, that's gonna instantly make me love this guy. Because I love that song and I feel like you never hear that song. You, you barely ever hear that song. You know, and yet it's one of my favorite songs. And so the fact that a wrestler has it is is hilarious. So yeah, I don't know. I can't get on board with you there. I love it. I don't I'm, count me stupid or like one of the, you know, count me one of the, the zombies. I love it. Tarzan Boy, man. It's a great song for me. You know, hey, I like I like everything, though, man. I don't know. I'd probably like Salt and Pepper. I'd probably like Cradle of Filth. Take some. I'll take some Shadows Fall, Pantera, Cradle of Filth. Take some Corn, Orgy, fucking Papa Roach. Yeah. Take some stabbing westward. Take some nine inch nails. Take some gravity kills. Tori Amos, Bjork. Let's go, Metallica. You want to throw that in there? We'll take some Slipknot, Mudvayne, Stained, Pink Floyd, Marilyn Manson. Let's go. I'm down with it all. Let's do every song. Let's do every song we can. Let's do garbage. Let's do typo negative. Let's do Slayer. Someone come out to Slayer. I'm down with that. System of a Down, you want to do that? I'll do My Chemical Romance. I'll do friggin', uh, they want a Miley Cyrus? Let's get some Miley Cyrus. Anyway, I thought the opening match was solid. Fun time. Went on a long time. It, you know, it's a little discombobulated, to be honest. But, you know, the crowd was into it. The crowd was into it, and, and, and it was all right. Then MJF cut another pretty good promo. Let's hear a little bit of MJF's promo because it was, you know, I mean, does MJF ever miss on a promo? I don't think so. Train outlaw hack Sting. Seriously, does anybody know? Dude, did he, he called Sting an outlaw, like, hack, and then asked if anybody has ever been tra trained, if Sting's ever really been trained. By the way, can we talk about what the fuck? The chairman has a chair. <laughs> it's like a designer chair. I thought that was hilarious, too. I was like, dude, does he have a chair that, like, <laughs> what is that chair about, dude? Let's listen to this. This is hilarious. Me, one of the biggest ratings draws in all of professional wrestling. Don't believe me? Google it. And today, we're going to talk about unsafe working conditions. You see, last week, I was thrown over the top rope with reckless abandonment by that untrained outlaw hack Sting. Seriously, does anybody know who trained that guy? I don't. Yeah, because he wasn't. Mm -hmm. The man was revered when he should have been released. And I can assure you, if I was working for a much more professional wrestling company, things like this wouldn't happen to me. But I suppose that's a conversation that needs to be had as we get closer to the bidding war of 2024. CM Punk. <laughs> you claim you wanted a piece of me. You claim you're a man of the people. And yet, the people want to see us go at it more than anything. And you refused to give that to him. You stayed away from me the entire match like a <laughs> gutless coward. Well, guess what, Punky? I'm over it. You're yesterday's news. How great is it? Probably shouldn't have left that video up so long, but how great is it? Hopefully AW don't take me out. How great is it that MJF is still promoting this the great war, the great bidding war of 2024. I mean, dude, does it get any better than that when he constantly references how WWE is great and they're the professional company and that that makes him a he bigger heel right there? I just love it, man. This is so brilliant. What he's doing is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant stuff uh, from MJF. Great decision. Brilliant. Love it. Absolutely uh a friggin' uh I mean this is to be cherished. You know what I mean? Let's be honest. This is to be cherished. It was simply amazing promo stuff as always from MJF. 
I mean that and that little full goofy. Uh, listen, I know some people roll their eyes at these type of things, but for me, man, I you know I mark out a little bit and I go, ooh, I like that. Let's hear what you guys are saying in the donations. Thank you guys for supporting my channel and my show. As always, um, I couldn't do this without you guys. Thanks for the support and keeping uh, my my uh, my show on the air with donations. I don't have any other means. Uh, but you guys. So thank you so much for that. Let's go to your comments. Oh. Okay, here we go. Everyone knows I'm out the window. Yep. Yo. Yo. Motherfucker. No oh, romance. Shit. Cause there ain't no chance in my happy pants. Could you put a chance come and take this? The, oh my god, the great Riff here. Reaper. Bad motherfucker ain't got no fear. What the time was the time, motherfucker. Time, motherfucker. Yo, put, put it in a happy rhyme, motherfucker. I say it's clock a clock Bang bang tick tock In a fucking sock Oil shock Two on cause I'm a one in stock What's the time motherfucker? Say it's clock a clock I say it's clock a clock Love ya Joe I'm sorry but Piro tripped your song Sad part is it's not better than yours I prefer the slower more melodic rhythm you have over their speed up version Your lyrics are better too it was blood night. Oh man, talk about blowing me, huh? I like that Riff Reaper. Um, you know, it's weird. I like Papa Roach's version of what they did. I like their song. I like what they did, and I like the song. But, um, you know, my mine mine is me. Like I, I really meant my. You know, so I obviously connect. I like I understand what mine means because I write my stuff like a poem first, and then I put it into the song. So. You know, I, I think maybe they did potentially rip some of that off, but, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure. But a lot of you guys thought so, I guess. And my wife did, too. But what are you going to do about it, you know? But I, I just feel pretty amazing that I, like, it sounds even that similar, I guess, man. Um, but, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I do have more of a slower style and a more of a weird alternative sort of style. They definitely have more of the pop sound uh, to theirs, but... I don't know. It's very interesting. Um, Riff Reaper, man. Good to see you, dude. OG Riff Reaper. And he said AW was blah tonight. Wow. So let's take a look at the poll, see what you guys are saying. Um, you know, about 14% of you guys uh, or 20% of you thought it was blah or terrible. So a little, little bit negative tonight, uh, but still overall a very positive rating here tonight. Pretty. It seems like everybody really thinks the show is fairly solid tonight. A solid go home show for AEW, you know, when you look at the average of what everybody thinks here. 355 votes and counting. And, um, you know, more than half of you almost thought it was good. 26% of you thought it was amazing. I mean, I'd like to have that weed, but, uh, I, you know. But so I would probably select good. If I was voting, I would write good. Click good, which is great. That's actually really good. We're happy to be in good and amazing territory. You don't want to be in blah territory. You know, you don't really want to be in blah territory, and you certainly don't want to be in terrible. And I would say WWE Raw isn't even in any of these categories. I would say WWE Raw is in the complete waste of my time bullshit category. You know? And that's the difference. You know, AEW scoring a good, WWE is like two or three, probably three scores down from this. Like, it's not even close in the quality of entertainment factor. As far as I'm concerned, you know, I don't know who else... You know, I don't know what other people think, you know, about WWE and how they're going. And I know that it's like, well, this is an AEW review. Why do you keep comparing to a WWE? And it's just because, I mean, like, it's it's fun. It's I got to be honest. I mean, it's not fun because I wish I wish WWE was so good that it was it was so close. I wish it was close. I wish I was like, man, I don't know what was better, Raw or this tonight. I would say maybe Raw beat it this week. You know, but that's not where we are. We're not even close to that. I wish we were at that. Then I'd be entertained. Then I would have something passionate to say on Monday nights as opposed to just being passionate on a Wednesday night. The only thing that can make me passionate on a Monday night is if they do things that are so ridiculously stupid that I snap and lose it, and then we're all entertained by me freaking out. But but Raw has been so piss poor, boring, bad uh, recently that there's not anything to get mad about, angry about, or to really call out. It's just the same own malaise. You know, and, and I think some things tonight on AEW were repetitive, and we've seen this before, but 
it's it's entertaining enough that that doesn't matter because it is good, it was good before it was good again even if it's not the most creative thing it's certainly still entertaining like mjf's promo is really kind of most of what he said you know has been said before by him and it's been done um but it's again it entertains you enough Jade had some problems tonight out there in the ring, you know. I thought the match felt like a big-time match, though, with her and Thunder Rosa, even though Jade is very narcissist Lex Luger-like, but worse in the ring. Uh, but, you know, Thunder Rosa did her best. Mercedes Martinez shows up. That's nice. You know, Chris Jericho's return. Uh, let's see when he hits the ring here. Santana with the ring bell. Listen to the crowd as Jericho. Jericho's on his way out here with a bat. He's got Floyd. Jericho, the bat to the midsection. Now, I'm not even sure Jericho is supposed to hit anybody with the bat. I'm not 100% sure because when Jericho's music hit and he came, by the way, Jericho and Judas and Fozzie, or just Fozzie, speaking of Papa Roach, doesn't Fozzie, the new stuff Fozzie does, sounds a lot like Papa Roach, doesn't it? But, you know, Jericho, he, like, fell when he got in the ring. He fell. And I almost wonder if one of the guys, like, felt like, oh, I got to help him recover from that. You know, so I'm going to run at him. He hits him with a bat. Because he didn't hit anybody else with the bat. And everybody was diving out of the ring except the one guy who ran at him, and he got hit with the bat. And I almost wonder if he did that because if Jericho had just fallen in the ring by himself, it would have looked funny because all the guys ran out of the ring but Jericho fell getting into the ring. And I wonder if the one guy that got hit by Jericho, he actually was looked like he was getting ready to get out of the ring too. Then when Jericho fell, he sort of decided to charge at Jericho and then he got hit with the bat. And now I now that could have been planned and maybe that is what they wanted to do. But it was just interesting to me that Everybody else dove out of the ring. He was he looked like he was going to dive out of the ring. And then when Jericho slipped and fell and almost landed on his face and was, and had tried to get up, that that's when the guy changed and ran at Jericho and then he got hit and then he rolled out of the ring. And I and granted that could have been part of the plan. But A ring bell. I mean, he could have planned it. They could have planned that easily. I mean, that's probably what the plan was. But I, I did like that the one guy went after Jericho because it felt like everybody else bailed when they saw Jericho coming down with a bat. But the one guy that was staring at Jericho the whole time and didn't get out of the ring quick enough, he saw Jericho fall. So it's perfect because he was like, "Oh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack him." He fell. I'm gonna go attack him, and then he get, and then Jericho gets up in time and then hits him with the bat. So it actually looked really good because of that, because Jericho fell, and it didn't seem realistic that when he fell, nobody would, everybody ran, you'd run out of the ring, you'd be like, oh, yo, I'm gonna get him, he fell, and that's what it seemed like he did. So it was stupid. It was, I don't know, I don't know. I'd love to know the story behind that, and maybe if Jericho is streaming it all this week, if I can get in his stream at any point to drop a super chat, I will, I will attempt to ask him that with five dollars, <laughs> because I would love to know the answer to that. Uh, because it was, and you know, I don't know. It was just something that I thought that was dry. That was bought. It was making me wonder. It's something stupid that I don't even know why I need to think about. But I was thinking about it. I was like, I wonder how, like, if that was planned out or because if it wasn't, it's a. I thought it was a great adjustment by the guy that got hit with the bat. But I don't remember who it was that got hit with the bat. But you know. Thank you to Soundwave92. He is the top donator of this stream. I love how Dan Lambert mentioned Jim Cornette. I thought that whole thing was good. I thought this was Dan Lambert used the right way. I thought Dan Lambert had some funny things to say that I found entertaining. I liked it. I thought Brandy Rhodes had some fun stuff to say. And I kind of wanted to see her beat the crap out of him. I got to be honest. I wanted to see her beat the shit out of him, which is what you want in something like that. And that's what I got. Um, you know, chat, what's up, Justin Smith? Uh, Lambert mentioned Jim Cornette. Yeah, then he mentioned him. That was fun, you know, and he, she mentioned Heyman. That was kind of funny. Uh, Steve Morin says, were you a singer? Yes, I was a singer. I was a drummer. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a good drummer. I'm a really good drummer, 
and I, I can play every other instrument poorly and I record music and stuff like that, but I'm not very I'm not I'm not very good, you know, at anything. And I'm not the best singer at all. I'm a terrible singer, but you know, it's I try to get by, you know. Whenever I was in, whenever I was in a band, I would play drums and we would be either looking for a singer or we would need a singer, and I would always end up becoming the singer for whatever reason. And so but I would really always wanted to be a drummer. You know, unfortunately, I wish I had a better... Imagine if I had a really good voice, though. If I had an amazing voice, like, it, I could be something good. But, I'm, unfortunately, I don't have that, really. I have a very industrial, scratchy, you know, decent layered, if voice-ish thing. You know, kind of like... It's like Trent Reznor doesn't have a really good voice, but I, I have, like, a worse voice than that. You know what I mean? So, it's like, it's not a good singing voice. You know, it's, it is what it is. But I, you know, at least I can get by with like a silly little song or a silly goofy thing, and everybody knows it's I'm doing my best, you know, because it's not very good, you know. But I can get the idea out there. I like I like the idea of of coming, giving you the idea, and then going and finding a band or somebody that can do it better or sing it the right way or really sing. Whereas my me, I can't really. I but I could do karaoke maybe. I could go to a bar and do karaoke, and it would be like maybe passable or something. I don't know. I think I'm terrible, though. But, you know, it is. Thank you for saying that. My, my wife hates when I sing. For the first time in Speaking of that, here it is. It's gonna start raining, man. It's raining, man. Hallelujah, it's raining, man. Now, man, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna let myself get. Look how he looks! Punk and MJF are basically circling Jerkin right now. Punk will be probably mess up with Wardlow's match and MJF will get blamed. <laughs> I was bummed out that Jade won tonight but Rosa is gonna go after Brit's title anyway after mm -hmm. Battle of the Belt so whatever. That's a great point. And look at his look! How he looks! Soundwave 92, thank you for the donation Soundwave 92, that's a great point. And I like what they did because I like that someone had to interfere for Thunder Rosa to lose. I thought it was a good way to introduce Mar uh, Martinez. I thought it was. I thought it was like it, it was the classic kill two birds with one stone, right? Or kill three birds with one stone. You got to get Jade there. She looks green and ridiculous, like she couldn't beat Thunder Rosa, but she gets help. You introduce uh, Mercedes Martinez, and you get Thunder Rosa out of there by not, you know, burying her or making her look bad. You know, she gets hit in the back of the head with something. I thought that was beautiful. I think they protected Thunder Rosa. They they got heat on on Jade, on Martinez, on the whole group. Um that was great. And just like Diablo 3 and how I need to get to a thousand Paragon, it looks like the Undisputed Era are going to be called Paragon or the Paragon or something like that. So yeah, you might be right. Everybody in the chat talking about that being Paragon. Soundwave, thank you so much, man, for that donation. You just absolute freaking beast sex slave. Let me tell you that. Um, I didn't like Mercedes, though, but I think the card debut in Dynamite. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of her. I think she's all right, but, you know, she's sort of like, like I like I like I think Jim Ross and them, I think they said something like, she's one of the best wrestlers in the world. Like, I don't think they needed to say that. You know, she's one of the most dangerous women in all of wrestling. She's a veteran, and she is just an absolute bully and a sick, and sometimes a sick individual, you know, something like that. But, you know, I don't know. Anna Hanneman, what's up, Anna? I don't know what she's saying. Uh, bass, tenor, alto, soprano, and industrial? I don't know. Not sure what Anna was saying, but what up, Anna? Um, oh, maybe she's talking about, like, the singing. I don't know. Man, I love I loved Depeche Mode. They've always been a bit industrial, you know? In your whore. I love that deep, 
sounding. Um, F that, it's undisputed. I, I don't know why they couldn't be the undisputed something. or But they probably get sued somehow or like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what kind of copyright or how close they would really want to get with that. But we've been watching Mercedes Martinez for a long time, and so now she's here. I would call her the assassin or something like that. Doesn't she? She kind of looks like an assassin. I would call her that. Call her the assassin, say, you know, Martinez. The assassin, Mercedes Martinez. Something like that. You know, she almost reminds me of the assassin from Diablo 4. You know, the new assassin. She's got, I mean, not really, but you know what I mean? Um, that vibe about her. You know, and, and you know what I'm talking about? She reminds me of the assassin in Diablo 4. And I know that Diablo 4 isn't even out yet in the trailer, but and I know that I think that girl is like a little bit more sexed up or whatever. But she just has this vibe, you know, about her. Um, Mercedes Martinez. And I can't wait for Diablo 4. And I can't wait to play Demon Hunter or Assassin or whatever it's going to be. But this is what, this is how I would look at Diablo 4, look at original Diablo, the Assassin, and I would make Mercedes Martinez into this character of this assassin like wrestler. And because she, she's already kind of like this, you know? Mother. The heavens didn't send me. Let's go, it's Diablo time. That's what I think of Marce uh, Mercedes Martinez. And they and they talk about her being this um you know, the best wrestler in the world. I just don't think that that fits her. I don't think best wrestler in the world, you know, I think it's more like the most dangerous woman wrestler, you know, the mo one of the most toughest women in wrestling history, you know, somebody like that, The out someone who's an outsider, someone who's an assassin, like sort of like that. I get like Vince about some of this stuff, like oh, you're, you're like an assassin. Like I could see myself getting worked up, you know, and then whacking off and then being sued. Uh, I'm gonna leave oh this shit! Look out! Right I'm about to leave a briefcase and explode. I'm gonna leave this briefcase right here. Come on, yeah! I'm gonna leave this briefcase right here. I'm gonna leave this briefcase right here. Fuck! Fuck! I'm gonna leave this briefcase right here. Son, run, run, you fat bitch! Run, 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 you fat bitch! Run, 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 you fat bitch! Run, 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 you fat bitch! You fucking fat bitch! Yeah, come on. Don't you think I'm a fucking terrorist? Run, you fat bitch! Run, you fat bitch! Your tracks today. Never run so hot in all your damn life. Kablooey, kablooey, you gonna blow up. Kablooey, kablooey, I'll blow run, your you cunt fat up. Bitch. You got tits. Didn't get to watch AEW tonight, no. but on faith I would still give it a 7 tenths and I know for a fact is better than Raw. Mm. Uh, yeah, you you can definitely know that, Shell. Hey, Shell, thank you so much again. Shell coming in with, oh, th the thug life assassin Mercedes Martinez, says Sith Negan. Speaking of Sith Negan, you remember a guy that was banned by Sith Negan? Well... I got a little clip here. Take a listen to this. <laughs> Minnesota, what is your fucking problem? <laughs> we're we're not gonna say we're we're not gonna say his Man. name anymore. We're gonna call him Egghead, everybody. We're gonna call him Egghead. We're not gonna call him anything else. We're gonna call him Egghead. Now, Egghead was trolled by somebody called called Minnesota. And Egghead lost his mind a little while back. And we happen to have the clip here. Thank God Sith Negan banned this man forever. He's a psycho. Listen to how unhinged he is. Minnesota, what is your fucking problem? Now, allegedly, he's angry because a man was masturbating on video to him. And he was upset about that. Fucking stop fucking harassing me. You, you, you hear that noise? That apparently that's somebody whacking off on a video, and they kept coming in on his Skype and whacking off, and it was all deleted and everything. But I happened to someone happened to send me it from a while back, and this is unbelievably disgusting. Don't steal! Stop it! Egghead, this is disgusting. Egghead. Minnesota, stop! 
I'm gonna call Ken! Oh my god. He's gonna blow my eardrums off. Minnesota, stop jerking off that sexual harassment, Minnesota! I'm gonna file charges sexual harassment on you, Minnesota! Stop it! Apparently, Egghead, this man was masturbating to Egghead. Like like on video and he had to and he had to observe it. He had to observe masturbating. Ve I mean very yeah. disturbing stuff, you know. Stop! 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 Jesus. This is better than AEW. Fuck you up, Minnesota, stop! Minnesota, stop fucking jerking your fucking dick off! Stop it! <laughs> I'm trying to tell fucking shit. Oh my god! Kid, it's very, it's very disturbing. This is now. This is a classic from a long time ago. It's just what a fun time it is. <laughs> wow! Listen to that. You really snapped right there. Add Minnesota to the call right now. <laughs> This is what happens when you watch WWE. I am to a fucking call right now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. Fucking small. Small or big? It's. He's, you know, he describes the the, the man's penis he's right there. Call me like I'm some sort of fucking handicap retard. He's not gonna fucking lie to me. We all know it's fucking him doing it. <laughs> like a handicap retard. <laughs> not gonna fucking call me like I'm some sort of fucking handicap retard. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm some sort of handicap retard. I mean, that yeah. is. That's Stop crazy. Stop fucking. Minnesota, we know it's you. Stop it! <laughs> Stop fucking jerking your fucking dick off! <laughs> Minnesota, you call me one more time. Stop fucking jerking your fucking dick off! <laughs> Minnesota, with you fucking jerking off on the show, I will... <laughs> call me one more time, Minnesota, with you fucking jerking off on the show... Oh man, I'm so glad I found this. Amazing. No, we know it's fucking him doing it. Uh, trigger bull. Call me one more time. One more time, and I swear to fucking God, I will file a police report on, on you. Stop it! <laughs> Stop fucking. Minnesota, we know it's you! Stop it! <laughs> Stop fucking jerking your fucking dick off! Oh, it's going to be a clip for a long time. Stop fucking jerking your dick off. Actually, Mercedes Martinez could be dubbed the Iron Woman of pro wrestling because she has competed in three one-hour-plus Iron Woman matches. Thank God Sith Negan got rid of Egghead a long time ago because that just is unnecessary. Um, actually, yeah, Mercedes Martinez could be dubbed the Iron Woman of pro wrestling because she has competed in three one-hour-plus Ironman matches during her 20-year career. Yeah. I, I mean, she could be called the... the Iron Woman. The Iron the Iron Woman Assassin. She could be called, like, a, a million things, man. She could be called so many things because of how just devastatingly lethal she is with her experience. You know, and that's what should be promoted about her is this woman has a dangerous amount of experience like she may not be as fast as she once was or as fast as some of the smaller women competitors and more you know younger competitors but her power her brutality and her you know experience is off the page and uh that's really what they just need to be uh you know building up at this point for her because there's just so much to that i thought jericho's return tonight was nice i was happy about it i i think a lot of people were happy about it uh, Jericho looked like fire tonight. I thought Eddie Kingston's arrival was exciting in the, you know, during the beginning of the match. And I think that now something could be going on with them and that could be, that could be interesting again. I mean, these are two guys that could be exciting and we'll see if that, we'll see if that happens. We'll see if that happens. Um, shout out to Jesse James, shout out to Cody Mastro. Who's in the chat. What's up, uh, Cody? How you doing, man? Hope you're okay. Saw what was up the other day, and hopefully you're all right. Um, tell your woman to stop putting things there. 
You know what I mean? You know what's up. Uh, but hopefully everything's okay, man, with you. Uh, Jericho needs to retire. Jesus Christ, Tony G. Wow. Okay. I mean, I'm not there yet with you. I don't care how bad he looks or how bad he ends up looking. Or I don't care if he looks like, you know, goddamn uh, Vigo the Carpathian. I don't care. You know, like, I love, you, you don't care. You don't, Jericho don't need to be anything. Jericho can, Jericho just needs to switch into full Hulk Hogan mode. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. That's all Jericho's got to be right now. He's got to be Hulk Hogan around the WrestleMania versus The Rock time. You know, he doesn't need to be doing a springboard lion salt, those sort of things. Just do what you can with that theme and that ability to rock it in the ring the way he can. That's what's going to be awesome. That's what's going to get over. And that's what's going to make all of us happy and all of us wet uh, down in the cockles, you know. Yeah, I could probably give you a Jake update in a second, but uh, before we do that and give the Jake update, hit the like button, stick the thumb up our ass, and let's take a quick break. Looks <laughs> like my little lass With needs Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> Pico here. What if the turkeys ate Chris Nagar? Oh. What if they ate his foot? Nagar. Sure. Cold up there? How about a piping hot piece of Pico pot pie? I know I could go for some of your pink puff pastry. Mm. Guy saying Tarzan boy died of AIDS. Really? Wow. I wonder, dude, you think he slept with the guy from Queen and they both caught the same strain? Freddie Mercury and him were playing around with the back door slipping? Nagar. That could be. That could be what it is. Mr. Belvedere into dog sex. Wow, that is a... Tom, you fucking crazy fuck. That is an extreme... Uh, <laughs> Come now. That's an extreme criticism. I got to be honest, my friend, to say that. Get back to that. You get back to being Tommy in C2010, being the <clears throat> being the guy that lights up your soul, being mm -hmm. the guy that, you know, and I'm going to be the guy that lights up your soul. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, be the guy that lights up my soul. That's how you light it up right there. I've never really had a girlfriend. It's okay. We get it. What happened to you, Tommy? What happened to me? Is I love food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You got I mean, listen, I, I agree. I love food like crazy. I, I love the shit out of food. That's why I weighed 230 pounds a little while ago. Little me, 5'10", Joe Cronin, weighed 230 pounds just a couple of months ago. Now I weigh 207 pounds. We're getting close to my goal. My goal was 205 by Christmas Day. I didn't hit it. I was at 209. But, you know, we're getting there. We're, we're getting close. I'm getting close to 200 and soon to 190, and then we'll be good to go. 180, and I'll be – at 180, that's when I'm going to start lifting. And then I'm going to try to get in shape. And when if I do, then you'll see me. I'll get naked. I'll put out pictures on, uh, you know, my website, joecronenshow.net. I'll put out pictures of me, like, flexing and getting weird. And uh, it'll be great. We can roast me looking like a snack, you know. But I'm not there yet. Right now I look like Dax Harward or whatever, you know. But if he was a little more out of shape, you know, which is not good. Um... But that's okay. But so, listen, at that point, Jericho's out there. I, You know, I, I think the show is good. You know, it's nothing crazy, like I said. MJF promo sparked me up a bit. Uh, you know, the whole thing about, like, whatever the guy is who's recording them, like, stopping the camera is getting, is getting a little old. I kind of like that they acknowledge that he's there. I do. I, I like that they acknowledge, and I don't remember his name. Somebody in the chat helped me with this. I don't remember. I, I, I just don't. Um, I don't, my point is I liked it originally when they were like acknowledging him and they were like, dude, turn the camera off. I'm done or whatever. But the problem is they do it like every time now it's like, turn off the camera, man. All right, dude, you got like, turn it off. It's like, all right, that's getting old. Like he's always there. He's always filming you. You know, he's there. Are you going to yell at him every time? But you know, I don't know. I mean, I get it. Like, it makes sense that you would do that every time. But it's like it's kind of getting to the point where it's like, hey, listen, just don't you don't need to acknowledge it every time anymore. You know, 
I mean, I like that once in a while, some you know, when something really serious happens or really personal, you're like, dude, turn the camera off, man. And, and that would happen in real life, I'm sure, a lot. But, yeah, Cutler, thank you. Brandon Cutler. I think show, uh, Sandman Sizzle was the first one, I think, to get it. Um, Brandon Cutler. Like, Brandon, turn the damn camera off. It's like, yeah, we've heard this a million times. Like, you're always telling him to turn the camera off. So I think they can do away with saying that every single time at this point. Once in a while, if there was something caught on camera that was extremely over the line or personal, extremely personal, then I get it. Dude, Brandon, shut the damn thing off. Like, that makes sense. But every time now, this is the fourth time recently that someone's been like, Brandon, shut the camera off. It's like, why, why you, like, it's kind of like, I don't know, I just think it's too much. It's like, all right, we get it. Like, you, you know, I like that you acknowledge that someone's there filming, but you're doing it every time. You know, um, but but I, I get it. I, I don't want Brandon Cutler to not be recording. I like that they're doing their thing and recording, but I don't think you need to acknowledge it every time now that, oh, hey, turn the camera off. Like, or, hey, you still filming or whatever. It's like, no, of course he's filming. You guys are filming everything all the time. It's like, you know, he's filming. You know, so I just think they've overdone that. That's my only thing. Um, Dan Lambert, I thought, was good tonight. He's recovered a little bit. I thought that segment was pretty good. It was better than Dan Lambert's last three appearances. I would say Dan Lambert's last three appearances weren't very good, uh, but this was a time where he he did look pretty good. I don't know why he was in this beef with Brandy. It's very strange to me, kind of, but, like, I mean, I, for some reason, enjoyed the interaction, so that's good. All that matters is I was kind of entertained by it. I was entertained by Wolverine Thunder Rosa. That was awesome. She's fucking fire. Uh, and I already told you what I thought about that match and how that thing went. And with Mercedes, we talked about that already. Jade Cargill looks amazing, except for that she looks a bit green in the ring. She had a little bit of botchiness. That's to be expected with her. CM Punk coming out playing good guy, giving Jim Ross some love, talking about the Twitter trolls and relating them to MJF. Um, but, you know, CM Punk also says AJ Styles is a racist. So it's hard to figure out how much realism I'm going to get out of that. But CM Punk with a good promo. As always, uh, bringing up them Twitter trolls. So I thought that was pretty solid. And I just think, yeah, overall tonight was just a well-rounded, solid show. And again, we talked about Brian Pillman Jr. who cut the promo of his life tonight. You know, it may have been a 6 out of 10 promo. It may have been a 7 out of 10 promo. But tonight, Brian Pillman Jr. cut the best promo of his wrestling career that I've seen and certainly the best one in AEW, and it was great stuff. So what did I do? I walked right into that ring to protect my brother. But as I got up, I, that's where things get a little fuzzy, and that's where my memory goes completely black. Next thing I know, I'm laying on the ground right next to the very person that I was trying to protect. Day in and day out. From day one, it started right here in Jacksonville, Florida. Come barging in. I'm not going to kick down your door because I know that is exactly what you want me to do. I loved it. Loved Brian Pillman's promo tonight. Now, I never knew my father. I don't know what kind of man he was. But if I learned one thing from his life, it's that you only get one of them. And I'm not giving you mine. I love that, man. If I've learned one thing from my father, it's that you only get one life. And I'm not giving him mine. Like, my God, bro, I love that promo. I, I'm, I'm loving it more and more because I believe him. God damn, do I love this promo more and more. I got to be honest. Now, I never knew my father. I don't know what kind of man he was. But if I learned one thing from his life, it's that you only get one of them. And I'm not giving you mine! Next week, you're going to see a brand new Brian Pillman. I love it, man. He, it's very, it reminds me of his father, but it also reminds me of mankind. Very mankind. I mean, you could, mankind could, be, could say something. It's, he he kind of has the cadence of mankind with the anger of his father um, and, or, and something else in his own in his own fire in there too. It's just I I really enjoyed that. If there's one thing I've learned from my father, 
It's you only get one life. And I'm not giving you mine. Dude, that was uh, it remind it's it reminds me of Brian it reminds me of Brian Pillman. But it also reminds me of mankind. Like I'm I'm I swear to god, I love it. Guys, I don't get this excited about WWE. I don't get this excited usually about almost anything. Guys, I'm excited. I can talk about a 30 second promo. Over and over and over again. I mean, seriously. I didn't know my father. What kind of man he was. But I know one thing. You only get one life. And I'm not giving you mine! I mean, like, what? I mean, that was great. Junior. But if I learned one thing from his life, it's that you only get one of them. And I'm not giving you mine! Next week, you're going to see damn it. a brand new... That's fucking great. The more I hear this, the better it gets. The more I hear it, the better it gets. Damn, man. I got to be up at 5 in the morning, guys, in the morning. Do you know that? I got to be up at 5 in the morning. That means if I went to bed right now, I'll be up in six hours. Do I get kudos for that at all? <laughs> I got to tell you guys, I get a meeting at 5 in the morning. or start. It starts at 6.30 in the morning, but in order to get there on time and get there, I got to be up at 5. So do I get any kudos? I got to be up at 5 a.m., Get out of the house within 45 minutes. Get to a meeting where I I, cho I choose my schedule and I have a meeting. Then I have a meeting that's, that's different than that. Separately, that I have to be at at 10. And then I worked my schedule until 9 p.m. Granted, so to say the least, I'll be dead tomorrow. You probably won't hear from me tomorrow, but on Twitter. Because I will be very busy. And I will most likely collapse when I get home tomorrow night. So I may not be on tomorrow night either. But Friday, um, I will have a day of rest. And I will be here Friday to hang out, talk, do things. And then, of course, Friday night, it's monetize this. There will be a lot to do Friday night. Right here on the Joe Cronin Show, monetize this. Do not miss Friday night. And if you want to get wild, you want to get weird, you need to bring it Friday night to monetize this, this Friday, right here, right? After SmackDown, after Rampage, after you get done beating your dogs or whatever you do at home, you got to be here for that. I'm going to get wild. And I might have to hurt somebody. I don't even know what's going to happen. But anyway, that being said, let's continue. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, he, he's got that emotion. I really liked it. I wonder if you guys, I mean, most of you guys seem to feel the same. You know, but I'm not 100%. And Sith Negan brings up a great point. I just want to acknowledge this man who has been a $100 patron for 30-something months. Um... I hope to God they are done with redesigning the TNT title with every new title holder. Leave it with the black strap. I don't know either why they keep doing that. Um, maybe it's to give everybody their own unique thing, but it, it does somewhat, to me, diminish the title. I like when title belts have a long run of looking the same. You know, the Intercontinental Championship has got to be the best championship in WWE, mostly besides the winged eagle belt and things like that, you know, looks matter. When a belt looks similar to when a guy like Hulk Hogan had it, it means that much more when a guy like Stone Cold takes it over. It means that much more when Bret Hart has it, the next guy has it. It feels like that's the belt. But when you change a belt every two seconds, it feels less special. Now, granted, we're just changing a little bit of the plate action and the, and the strap color which I don't have a problem with that either. Once in a while, I like when the Intercontinental belt is 75% black strap Intercontinental title. 
But once in a while, when somebody had a white belt version or a yellow belt and things like that, that was okay too, once in a while, to have some fun with it. But in the end, you'd like the belt to remain the way it's supposed to look, mostly. And I think the belt has changed a little too much. I don't mind that it changed once, twice. You know, that was okay. After Brody Lee, I get it. But the fact that it's still changing, I don't get that. I And maybe that's so everybody has their own unique look when they had it, but I don't like that. I don't. I think that's the opposite of what you should do. Um, so I, I do think I agree with Sith on that. Uh, New Year's Eve into New Year's Day edition of Monetize This. That's right. Although I am working on New Year's Day, so I'll be dead on New Year's Day. But it will be a New Year's bash, no doubt about it. Now, if I hadn't had to get a job, uh, you know what I mean? I definitely would have probably done an all-night New Year's Eve bash with you guys. Uh, but we are not able to do that because I do have to work Saturday. Um, but, you know, that's okay. We'll be on until, th you know, 1, 2, or 3 a.m., something like that. And we'll have a big, uh, maybe we'll start monetize this a little early. I don't know. Jade stole Shelton Benjamin's hair. That's a good point. Uh, Soundwave, thank you so much, man. Good to hear you, bro. What's up? You want to get weird? And look at his look. How he looks. Never knew my father. I don't know what kind of man he was. But if I learned one thing from his life, it's that you only get one of them. And I'm not giving you mine! Next week, you're going to see a brand new Brian Pillman. And I'm not giving you mine! I love it. I want it to be Mankind so bad. But no, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds more, and I'm not giving you mine! I love it. And I'm not giving you mine. God damn it, is that good? I can't believe it. Got to give it to Brian Pillman Jr., man. I'm all over that. I'm all over that promo. Simply love it. We're back live. Great promo from Brian Pillman Jr. Then the main event was pretty good. I took it pretty serious. I think at times the crowd was good. They came unglued a little bit. Sometimes they were a little quieter. Other times they popped up a bit. And then AEW announced that we're going to be staying with this match as long as possible because AEW, uh, I mean, TNT is letting us run over if we have to or whatever. We'll stay with it as long as we need to. I think that they need to announce that more often. I think they need to, number one, get that more often. I think they need to announce it more often. That way you don't know when the main event's going to end. I also think AEW needs to work on maybe ending the main event around six minutes before the end, multiple times. That way it's not set in stone that it's the end of the night. You know this match is going to go 10 minutes, and it's going to hit right at the end of the show. They need to stop with that. Uh, this is something that hurt WWE when they started stop the run over as well. The run over is a huge, exciting tool because even if the show was mostly garbage, the idea that you didn't know when Raw was going to end. Was it going to end at 11, 11.01, 11.05? There were, there were many times uh, a few years ago that Raw set the records for the runover. You know what I mean? They, set, they, they ran over more than Raw from 98 or 99 or whatever, or 2000 or whatever, or even whatever. They just ran way over. There was one night they ran over about like 24 minutes. It was insane, and I think that Dave Meltzer had reported that that was the longest runover they ever had. And the idea that anything can happen. Anything could happen, and we don't know when it's going to end. That is something that really drives and helps a main event feel like a main event. Simply great stuff when that happens. So I think if they can do that a lot more, that we don't, we, we've been given extra time if we need it, but you can't just do it every time there's extra time, they get extra time. And every time there's not extra time, the match just somehow ends right away, right on time. I mean, it's a little goofy. And I know that we all know it's all a work and we all know it's fake and work. and uh, But it's just, it's that suspending disbelief always helps. The more you suspend disbelief or the more you can make it feel like it's real, the more you can suspend disbelief and believe it's real and the more you'll be invested in the product. So that matters. So if they can do that more, that would help them. 
certainly it would have helped it helped WWE because even if you had a bad show, you had that last main event and you don't know what's gonna happen and they got the run over. But uh yeah, Woken Warrior, part of the best part of the night was Jim Ross doing that. You know? Uh, Seth Negan, well, it depends, really, man, Seth. It really depends, man. I mean, you know, I, I think it would be fine to do a 9 p.m. show or a 10 p.m. show. I think doing 10 p.m. to, uh, you know, 10, 11, 12, 1, you know, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. is good, you know? Now, if people are rocking, we're having a good time, and I'm in the I'm, chemistry is hitting, and we have a lot of callers, and, and donations are coming in and stuff like that, like, sure, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to be, we're going to have plenty of fuel to keep going you know, as late as we want, you know, 3, 4 a.m. But, you know, if we've done all we can in three to four hours and, you know, it's getting late, you know, we'll end the show. Again, you never know when it's going to end. Monetize this used to be one hour. Then it was two hours. Then it started hitting three hours and four hours. And then monetize this at some point started hitting six, seven, eight hours. It was crazy. Then we hit 10 hours at times. I mean, it was, you know, then over the last year and a half, it's dwindled back down to six, five, you know, and then once in a while, now we hit two and three hours. You know, it really depends. You don't know what's going to happen on Friday nights here. I monetize this on the Joe Cronin Show on Friday nights. I mean, bring your drinks and bring your neighbor's credit card to the show because we're going to need it. You know, um, thank you to uh, so far the top donation of this stream. Speaking of money, uh, it is Soundwave92 with the $29. Thank you, Soundwave, for that and everybody else who's been chiming in throughout. Here's a commercial break for the people. Um, that uh, to help uh, support the show. Hope you guys uh, enjoy that if you're getting it. Uh, again, capacity of Daly's Place 5,500, but I believe that 5,000, maybe 4,800 are all that can fit in there when wrestling's there because the chairs are you know taken up by the ring, taking the whole center stage area because I think otherwise there's a stage up there where a band would perform normally. So I think that they lose about 500 seats when there's a wrestling ring in the middle of where the general admission floor would normally be. Uh, that, at least that's what I think. I could be wrong, but I don't I don't know about that, to be honest. But I, I think that's the case. Kyle O'Reilly tonight sold his ass off for some of those clotheslines uh, that best friends were giving him. They were giving him best friend clotheslines that were absolutely clobbering him, you know? So that was nice. TNT got to make sure Big Daddy comes on 10 on the dot. That's true. Dude, if I knew Big Daddy was on, I might have started watching that tonight. I love Big Daddy. I mean, who doesn't love that movie? By the way, we have 506 votes. Let's go find out what you guys are saying about tonight's show. And there it is. 51% say tonight's AEW Dynamite smash. New Year's smash was a 51% said it was a good show. 29% said amazing. Damn, some people thought tonight's show was amazing. I mean, if this was amazing, what the hell were some of those really good shows? There were 9 out of 10s and 10 well, out of 10s. Well, what do you know? That's crazy. We got ourselves a new member. Oh. And I got a member in my pants. Oh, shit. My man, A. O'Donnell, 25. He's been a supporter for a long time. Shout out big time to O'Donnell for that, uh, O'Donnell rather, for that uh, donation, and rather that, which is a donation and a membership. Uh, we're going to be doing a members only stream Q&A coming up soon. So if you are a member, you'll get access to that. So make sure you do become a member down below and get access to the members only Q&A that's coming up this weekend. I wipe my own ass, Clambake says. What's up, Clambake? You're the man, dude. How you been, bro? How's the, how's the fam going? How's the fam, dude? Me and you should hang out sometime, bro, and talk and do a podcast and hang out and talk about everything that, everything you've ever wanted to know about me, everything I've ever wanted to know about you, and we're, you know, our state of Massachusetts and all that other bullshit, bro. I think we could have a really fun podcast. I think me and you should hang out and do it one day. You know, me and you have been friends for a long time. We also had a little beef for a second, but. I don't know, man. It's hard, and I, and I know you can probably appreciate. It. I don't know what's real with people. You know, what I mean, people are so one second they're nice to me or they've been friends with me, and then the next minute they just turn on you and they go, "Oh, scumbag!" And I, you know, so you understand how it's. I just keep my distance from a lot of people, but I think I'm ready, uh, clam baked, to maybe have a conversation with you. I think we could do it. I think we should do it. 
uh, let me know. You know? Okay, we got a uh, another we got a dono coming in. Let's see who it is. S -s 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 Super chat party. Thank you, sir. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Tony Atlas and Rocky Johnson made love had baby Jade. Ooh. Tony Atlas and Rocky Johnson made love and had baby Jade. I mean, she's definitely out of the freak show clinic. I love her. I love her look. Is you know that's what I love. I love her look. Look at her look. How she looks. <laughs> like I mean, I love Jade's look. You know, I gotta be honest. I absolutely love Jade's look. And look at his look. How he looks. She she's got a great look, man. I absolutely love it. It's just that muscular physique. She just looks like a megastar. You know. Now she wrestles like someone who just you know. I mean, she's better than, I think she's better than Nia Jax. Like, I don't know why I kind of enjoy her better than Nia Jax. Or at least she entertains me more than Nia Jax. Even if she's greener, I, you know, I don't know. But I love her look. So whenever someone brings her up to me, I'm like, yeah, bro, I love her look. Like, I 100% enjoy... Like, I get, dude, I, I was Vince McMahon. I would just be like, look at her look, how she looks. Like, Vince McMahon should have been throthing at the mouth. Thank you for the donation, Mr. Pico Boulevard. You absolute savage bastard. By the way, speaking of look at her look, how she looks, did I ever put that song up on Patreon? Does anybody know? Did I ever put that up on Patreon? Did I? I thought I did. I thought I put the look at his look how he looks up on Patreon. Did I really not put that up there? Somebody let me know if I, you know, if I didn't. I can't believe I didn't put that up there. And I, you know what? I didn't even clip the audio of it, if that's the case, which is crazy to me because I had so much fun with it. I don't even remember when I got to, I actually got to find what video it's from so I can put it up there. If it's not shout out to Soundwave 92 who a month ago dropped a $50 super thanks on one of my uploaded videos. I mean, dude, this is pretty fire. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated, dude. That was pretty ballsy of you. Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't, I'm trying to figure out where I, where I had it. Can you believe it was over a year ago that, that War Horse debuted on AW? Can you believe that that was July of 2020 that War Horse debuted? You realize that? It was that long ago. I mean, that seems crazy to me. It didn't feel like it was that long ago. It's crazy how time has been flying by, you know, and it it hasn't felt like it, but it but it really has it's been flying by. I thought I put it up on Patreon though. I need to make it a six dollar donation too. I really I didn't do that either, uh, Sith. Oh my God, are you serious? Jesus, that's crazy. Why didn't I do that? It's an easy thing to do. I mean, easy enough to have done. And now it's getting too far away to where I, I don't remember where I even did it. What, you know, what AEW review it was. I don't remember. It was like three weeks ago, maybe. I think it was AEW three weeks ago. Let me see. I feel like I it might've been four weeks ago though. Yeah. You know what? I, I think it was. It was more than that. It was like five weeks ago or six weeks ago, maybe. Wow, that's... I mean, I'm really forgetting where it was. Um, AEW Dynamite. Let's try the 1117 episode. Maybe maybe it was the 1117 episode. I don't believe it. He's here. Good God, he's here. What is this? Is this it? 
in AEW. What is this? I have come to AEW for one reason. I will always rise and my enemies will always rest in peace. The Reaper's here in AEW. He's come from under the ring to the depths of hell to attack Kenny Omega. Oh my and God, the Reaper. Here, I... Can you imagine if The Undertaker showed up in AEW as the Reaper? <laughs> I mean, that will not happen. Vince McMahon would give The Undertaker $20 million for two years to literally just appear at nothing, like to not go to AEW as the Reaper. <laughs> imagine if he went, oh man, AEW should create the Reaper. <laughs> just rip off The Undertaker completely and have the Reaper show up. And have Bray Wyatt be the Reaper. Oh my God, can you imagine that? Jack the Reaper. <laughs> I'm the Reaper. <laughs> I'm gonna bury Kenny Omega alive. I don't believe it. I don't know. <laughs> now that is not the look at his look how he looks donation. So 1117 is is not correct um i suppose we could try 11 11 8 oh that's a raw review though yeah i don't know man we have to find it look at his look how he looks we got to find it maybe uh 10 23 the october 23rd well actually you know what i'm gonna look at the file when is the file from that uh, that's all i'll know when i made the look at his look how he looks clip oh shit i made the clip from december 10th on december 10th so this isn't that long ago okay yeah, we'll figure it out. December 10th. Okay, this is easy. All right, so here we go. This is this is going to be easy now. All right, three weeks ago is what? Is December 15th, so it's probably from the 8th or the 15th. So it's either the 8th or the 15th. Okay, here we go. It's the 8th or the 15th. This is much easier. All right, so we got the... Uh, we got the all right the fifteenth. Let's try the fifteenth. Winter is coming. Oh, it, oh, it, isn't it? It is winter is coming, isn't it? Or am I wrong? I'm so sick of you little de meth head devil worshippers. Wow. By the way, speaking of December fifteenth, what a show here, man! I got to thank you guys very much for that. This was the night the trolls would said I would make zero dollars and I'd go homeless. And then fucking Sith Negan, Shell, and a million other people chimed in and dropped donations. And we, I, I had over $500. We blew the $300 goal out the window that night. Thank you to Sith, Shell, and so many others. Uh, Crazy Horse, Spider Clam, and, and all these other people, man. Fire to you guys. Thank you so much for that. That was seriously awesome. Now, I don't think it was that night, though. Maybe it was. Look at this gift. I like this gift. Oh, no, this is it. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> look at his look, how he looks. This, this is, is it. The, the gift. What do you think? Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, he looks like a crook. Look at him, look like he look. Look and look at his look that he looks. Look what he looks like a crook. I'm coming for you, crook in the nook. I'm coming for you, I look like a crook. Look at his look, look at his look, how he looks. Look at the looks, look of a crook. Look of a shook, yeah, he's a shook. Looking for chook, looking for cook. Look at his look, how he looks, you looking shook. Look at his look, how he looks, you looking shook. Look at his look, how he looks, you looking shook. Yo, look at his look, how he look, you looking shook. You better get ready to get stuck. Yeah, look at his look, how he looks. <laughs> look at his look, how he looks. Oh, I should have it. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, you get shook. Look at his look, you getting shook. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, he looks like a crook. Look at his look, you getting kind of shook. Look at his look, look at his look, how he looks. And look at his look. Look at his look, you getting shook. And look at his look. How he looks, you looking shook. 
and he's a crook. Look at his look, you're getting shook. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, how he looks. Getting shook. Look how he looks. And look at his look, how he looks. Look, look at he lick, lick at he split. About to cut your fucking wrist with a slip. Yeah, got a razor blade, I'm in the making my slave I'm in the making, make me fucking sugar lemonade I'm coming for your mom, I'm coming for your dad I'm coming for your brother with a fucking goddamn pad I can't believe I bought a bazooka to shoot ya Look at his look, how he looks, look at his look He looks like a crook, look at him, look like he look Look at, look at his look, that he looks, look what he looks like a crook I'm coming for your crook in the nook I'm I mean, I think that the problem there is that's me listening to it, so I gotta find the original version so it's solid. But anyway, I think I found it. Is it really from December fifteenth, or am I just playing the clip of it there? I think that was us trying to figure out the dono, but originally it was from a different day. Get scared. Thank you, Tony Schiavone, for that. And look at his look, how he looks. <laughs> um, what up, Devonte? James, what's up? It was a decent tonight. Not the best, but a great way to close the year. Yeah, I thought it was a good way to close the year tonight, James. I thought it was pretty good, man. AW, yep, yep. Timestamp 118. Uh, thank you, Seth. So this is not quite it. Oh, no. See, this is me listening to it, though. That's the thing, Seth. That's me listening to it. So we got to find the actual version. The thing he could come up with was a Get it. Tire match again. You know, DJ Scandalous was oh, on. Wait, I'm back. back. Eat my friend's ass. Match other than the women's match with. The I don't know, man. Years still trying to years find it. Even it feels like, or two and a half, whatever. AEW's been around now. It's just felt like they're always delivering surprises. Like, Jake. Is, you just look at what they did tonight and pretended it was negative. A commercial. I'm trying happens. to find it. A fucking. We gotta find it, man. This is crazy. Well, that is, uh, that's messed up. We, we, we have to, Colonel Santos, we are going to be creating a new donation song um, called Look at His Look How He Looks. Oh, yeah, see? Um, I'm just trying to find the right gif, you know, and, I, and, I'm, and we got to, you know, I got to make sure I actually get donated. See, I don't think this is the original night that he said, look at his look how he looks. I think, because that was way longer ago, I think. But then again... I don't know, man. So, does somebody remember what episode of Dynamite this was from? What's up, Clan Bay? Joe, come to one of our shows next month in Hull. Jesus. Imagine me coming all the way out to Hull when I used to live in Quincy. It would take an hour to get out there now. Take a long time to get out there. You know, I used to play at the uh, at the bar out there in Hull. One of the bars. Was it the Blue something or the Blue Oyster? or Not the Red Parrot. It was one of the other ones. I used to play there when I was in a metal band back in fucking 2002. Um, yeah, so Jake is doing all right-ish. His family is, you know, his daughter has an issue. He's got an issue, and they're dealing with that. He was going to try to make his return recently, but he got a setback, and so that's the update on Jake, really, that uh, he hopes to come, still come back at some point soon. And he hopes to mail. He hopes to get me the new belt so we can unveil it here on the show, but that he also might, you know, be able to make a, a some kind of spot return here soon. So we're looking forward to that. And that's uh, that's basically where we're at, man. That's uh, with him, and so hopefully that's uh, things go right and works Su out uh, for him. Su you know, Su it's been a tough super tough year. chat party. Oh yeah. shit! Oh yeah. You think half a page title reign will be short? Wow. Uh, do you think uh, Adam Page's title reign will be short? Yeah, you know, I think so. I don't think it's going to be much longer. I would like to think that Adam pa Page, Hangman Page won't have the belt in three months. In three months, the belt won't be with him anymore. But you never know, man. They could be like, yo, he's going to ride with it forever. You know, I just hope it's not much longer. It's not that interesting to me, but maybe maybe we could get interesting and I could change my mind. Um, thank you, villain. What's up? Well, what do you know? I'd say three months. We got less. ourselves a new member. Oh, shit. And I got a member in my pants. Mr. Pico Boulevard. Thank you, Mr. Pico Boulevard. Good to hear from you, man. 
What up, dude? What up? How you doing, man? Good good to see you. Thank you for becoming a member. You know, why does everybody, whoever comes here, and like almost everybody, just f fucking full of shit. Like, it's so weird. God, I'll never know. But I uh, appreciate it anyway. Thank you, Mr. Pico Volbar. Ninja Turtles Vanilla Ice Reunion. Orlando, February. What? I don't get that one. What does that mean? Oh, oh, I get it. Ninja Turtles Vanilla Ice Reunion, Orlando in February? What does that mean? Like Vanilla Ice is going to bring the Ninja Turtles up on stage for a little Go Ninja Go? Mr. Pico Boulevard, three months of support. Oh, the C-Note. That was it, Clam Baked. It was the C-Note. Thank you, dude. That's it. It was the C-Note. Holy shit. Yeah, played at the C-Note a bunch. In fact, I snuck a drink. I got... I got wasted there one time. Well, okay, I didn't get wasted, but I got buzzed when I was like 16 or something, 17. Uh, but I never really drank when I was younger. I really didn't drink until I was 21, but there was like two or three occasions where I took some sips of alcohol and I thought I was drunk. You know what I mean? Like, I am drunk, man. I am the fucking... Uh, you know, when you're a kid. Uh, yeah, I was a loser. I was like, I'm drunk. Huh? It probably wasn't even close, just slightly buzzed. And I was like, oh man, you know, I'm fucking drunk. Uh, you know, like <laughs> I was probably like, I had like a fucking quarter of, uh, le like lemonade alcohol, you know, it was like, I'm drunk. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Now that I think about it, I forgot all about that. I just triggered my memory. I'm drunk, man. Are you drunk? Holy shit. We're wasted, dude. We're wasted. Jake the Snake. Dude, Jake the Snake has COVID. Did you know that? Dude, Jake the Snake beat cancer. He beat drug addiction. He beat obesity. If Jake the Snake beats COVID-19, Jake the Snake is officially God. Okay? This guy, this guy escaped being a father. He escaped being obese. He escaped being on drugs. He escaped being addicted to alcohol. He escaped cancer. And if he escapes COVID, I say we anoint Jake the Snake Roberts as the return of Jesus Christ on this planet. Jake the Snake Roberts is officially God incarnate or whatever you want to say. He is God. Come down from the heavens. Jake the Snake Roberts is God or the new Jesus Christ. He will come again. He has come. And it's Jake Roberts. This motherfucker has escaped more shit than anybody. Now, listen, Keith Richards and all the Rolling Stones are impressive, you know, with how they just won't die and all them. And I get it. You know what I mean? No doubt about it. They have. But the thing about them is they did not have to deal with what Jake Roberts has to deal with. That's the thing. You know, those guys, they were in a band, they did a bunch of drugs, and then they keep surviving, and they had blood transfusions and all these things. Jake Roberts, alcoholism, crack cocaine, every drug there is, cancer. You know, I mean, this guy escaped fatherhood, for Christ's sake, for a long time. There is nothing better than that. <laughs> Escape being a dad. Yeah, you don't get it, Andre? Laugh a little. Come on. Laugh. <laughs> Laugh it up, fuzzball. It was a big, huge sausage fest. I had to hop in. <laughs> I I don't care about COVID. I didn't even get COVID. You can't kill me. Nothing else has. Oh, yeah. Boston has all the mandates. Yeah. You can come out here to me. Come out to this area. There ain't no mandates out here. Nobody gives a shit out here. The fucking fire trucks are at my house tonight and the police were on my street because they someone said they smelled gas as they were walking down the street. And apparently they called the, the fucking fire department and they were all up and down the street looking for, for gas leaks. They never found one and I never smelled gas and they never found anything from what I saw, but they were here looking kind of funny. You know, I was like, oh, cool. Are we going to we're going to blow up? We're like the people in Lawrence did right up the road. All the houses that were blowing up. 
I think they blew up though because the gas pressure went crazy and and they spilled into the houses, and people weren't home, so they built up for a long time and then exploded. I mean, if I started smelling gas in my house, I would immediately turn the gas off in the basement. You know, I mean, granted, if I came into the house and it stunk of gas extremely, you know, I would call the fire department. I wouldn't go in the house. But if I smelled gas, started to smell gas a bit, but it wasn't too insane, I would turn the valve off at least. Open the windows as fast as I could, turn the valve off. I'd pr- or I'd get the family out of the house first. I mean, that's the first thing you'd do. But, you know, if I'm if I'm in the basement and I start smelling gas, I mean, I'm going to run I'm going to run over to the valve and turn it real quick. Why not? And then I would run upstairs and see everybody get the hell out of the house, you know. But, I mean, turning the valve off as you run by isn't a hard thing. It's right in my wall. It's right there. I just punch the thing open and turn it, run out of the house. But, uh, yeah, pretty uh, weird tonight for that to happen. Nothing, you know, it's exciting for the kids to stare at the fire trucks. That was fun. I've never really had a girlfriend. San Diego sanitation workers are on strike. Dumpsters have not been picked up in three weeks. Oh, that's great. That's great. Oh, Sith Negan found it. 12-8-21. Wow, Sith Negan. Look at that. What a fucking goddamn champion Sith Negan is. From the 12-8 episode. Let's go. Sith Negan coming in huge clutch for a video. That will just fu- that would sell their mother for a dollar. You know, I am dripping, and all I need is the cucumber to go in and stimulate it, because this was fire, bro. I wanted to have a scarf around my neck. You know, they made me want to have a scarf around my neck, and for the first time ever in my life, I might have wanted to be from New York, which I never ever. You know, when I see MJF in this New York crowd, I think of cheese, grease, pasta, nasty people. Disgusting, horrible Italian type people <laughs> that will just fu- that would sell their mother for a dollar, you know, so they could get a gold wristwatch or something. I hate these people, but you know what? Tonight I love them, and I wanted to be one of them. That's how good this was. That's how good this promo was tonight. I identified with the New York Island tonight. Yeah, it was a couple weeks ago in New York. I mean, that was fun. Give the assist to mom. We've seen him, and look at his look, how he looks. <laughs> look at his look, how he looks. What a call by Tony Schiavone. Look at his look, how he looks. I don't believe it. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at didn't look like he looked now like he looked before he looked. <laughs> <laughs> how long has it been since we've seen him? And look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, how he looks. <laughs> All right, I think I was, I'm sorry to spend 10 minutes on this, but it's just too fucking hilarious for me. <laughs> look at his look, how he Look at his look. Look how he looks. Look at he look. Look at he lick. Lick at he split. About to cut your fucking wrist with a slit. Yeah, got a razor blade. I'm gonna make you my slave. I'm gonna make you make me fucking sugar lemonade. I'm coming for your mom. I'm coming for your dad. I'm coming for your brother with a fucking goddamn pad. I can't believe I bought a bazooka to shoot you. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, he looks like a crook. Look at him, look like he look. Look at look at his look that he looks. Look what he looks like a crook. I'm coming for your crook in the nook. I'm coming for you. I look like a crook. Look at this look. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at the looks. Look of a crook. Look of a shook. Yeah, he's a shook. Looking for chip. Looking for cook. Looking for broke. Looking for broke. You're gonna choke. Looking. I mean, that's his new theme right there. You know, write some better words. Get that going. That's the new fucking theme to Trent Beretta. Bra. Trent Beretta. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. The coffee's really kicking in now. I'm ready to go, dude. Look at his look, how he looks. Dude, look at his look, how he looks. My God, he's here! He's back home here on Long Island! Here we go! How long has it been since we've seen him? And look at his look, how he looks! And look at his look, how he looks! (laughs) Look at his look, how he looks. Yeah, look at his look, how he look, how he look, how he shook, how you shook, how you look. Look at his look, how he looks. 
Look at his look, how he looks, you looking shook. Look at his look, how he looks, you looking shook. Look at his look, how he looks, you looking shook. Yo, look at his look, how he look, you looking shook. You better get ready to get stuck. Yeah. Look, at his look, look at his look, how he looks. 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 Look at his look, you get shook. Look at his look, you get shook. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, he looks like a crook. Look at his look, you get kind of shook. Look at his look, look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, you get shook. Look at his look, like how he looks. You look and shook, and he's a crook. Look at his look, you're getting shook. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, how he looks. Getting shook. Nagar. Let's go, bro. Make that the song, brother. Make that. That's a fucking hit, bro. That's a fucking hit. Uh, yeah, so glad we got that. I think I think I had edited this once before, and then I never... I mean, maybe I do have it somewhere. Maybe I just did all that for no reason. And I actually have it somewhere. I mean, I, I could. Let me take a look and see if we just did all that for nothing. Although I appreciate Sith, man. We found it. So at least if I don't have it, I can remake it. Because that was just too funny, man. Look at his look how he looks. Was one of, I mean, that's... Dude, that is one of the funniest calls ever in my life. We haven't seen him in a long time. And look at his look. How he looks. <laughs> like, I mean, it's one of the... I'm sure it's old to some people at this point, but it's just funny as hell to me. Like I, I can't get enough of that. I can't get enough of look at his look, how he looks. <laughs> I wish that we could get a hold of Tony Giovanni to like, he probably would just be like, you're an idiot. I don't get it, but whatever. I think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. Looks like my little lass needs a shaving. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, looks like your little ass needs a shaving, baby. Hey, Mr. Pico, thank you, sir. Everybody else, thank you for those donos, man. Much appreciated uh, for leaving the love in the donations and making me wet where it really matters in my pants. You know what I mean? Much appreciated. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I just... I love, you know what? It makes me like Tony Schiavone that much more. You know, I didn't, I just didn't realize how much I love him. Yeah, I think I gave up on it, Sith. I think I was like, okay, this isn't really good. You know, I was playing it on the guitar and I was like, all right, this is kind of stupid. And then it was, I think it was the first beat I found. I just was like, yeah, the guitar thing isn't working. All right, let me put that down. And then I think the first beat that I found was that beat and it worked that beat worked perfectly like and it was all just good luck you know but um yeah i think we got i think we got really lucky with that cuz it could have been shitty 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 but that beat it might have been the second beat but either way whatever that was the perfect beat for it whatever that beat was i wish i could probably find it now cuz it's pretty freaking funny Oh God! Wet taint? What the hell? I don't want to do that. You want to do wet taint? Get back to that. You get back to being Tommy in C twenty ten, being the <clears throat> being the guy. Yeah, yeah. Get 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 back to that. Minnesota, what is your fucking problem? I can stop fucking harassing me. <laughs> Minnesota, we know it's you. Stop it. <laughs> Minnesota, stop. I'm going to call Ken. Minnesota, stop drinking out the sexual harassment, Minnesota. I'm going to file charges sexual harassment on you, Minnesota. Stop it. I like how somebody's jerking off in front of him. That's the best part. Um, Alexa, uh, listen, AEW, I mean, WWE has Alexa Bliss. I have my daughter. Like, like, remember, this was last year when my daughter attacked me on my stream and just jumped up and scared the heck out of me. 
Uh, I got to figure out where that purple light went. My lighting is all jacked up in here. But yeah, my daughter was attacking me last year, and that was uh, <laughs> I got my own I got my own problems over here. I found these pictures the other day, and I was dying laughing because I remember her invading my stream last year at this around this exact time. Uh, it's too good. Too good, too wood, baby. Look at his look, how he looks. Look at his look, how he looks. I did it live on the show. It took me like a few seconds, Steve, I guess. I did it live on my show. So it took me, it didn't take me anything. I mean, I guess we just kind of, I whipped out a guitar. I started being like, look at his look, how he looks. And then I put it down and then I found a beat. It didn't quite work. And I found another one and there was that one. And I started doing that. So I don't know. It didn't take long to do that. I think I did, I did it live. I did the whole thing live. I mean, I don't know. I think it was, uh, it was all, it was all pretty much live. So I, I don't know. It didn't take me anything. You know what I mean? Die, you fat asshole! Oh, that's no, that's not nice. That's not nice. Get back to that. I need to get back to being Tommy in C2010, being the... <clears throat> being the guy that lights up your soul. Being the guy that, you know... And... <laughs> Yeah, send send it away. I'd love to see it, uh, Mr. Pico. Send me something cool. I'd love to see something cool, Mr. Pico Boulevard. Send it away, brother. I am fully, full-on game for that. This is the woman the lesbians are kissing. I love this. Is this all I am? <laughs> oh, man. Very sexy. Very, very sexy stuff. Check this one out. Merry Christmas. I just bought a gun. I'm gonna have to shoot up everyone. Merry Christmas. I just bought a gun. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Kill Miss, Merry 
Christmas, I bought a gun. I just turned it off and... Um, that was about it, I think. Did I get them all? Yeah, that was it. I got it all. That was those are the two ones. Uh, we got the big neck donation. Better have respect for my neck. You look at yours, compared and wet. My neck's so big, I get extra breath. Breathing in my lungs won't accept. I can fit a thousand cocked on my throat, I still don't choke. Big ass jaw, make the girls go, ah, oh, that's the biggest damn neck that they ever saw. Think that's big, wait till you see my bar. Ah, oh, nah, biggest neck you ever saw. Ah, oh, nah, biggest neck you ever saw. Ah, oh, nah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I had a lot of fun. I will see you tomorrow. Uh, maybe not see you tomorrow, but I'll see you Friday for Monetize This. Thanks for being here. Uh, hit that like button on your way out. Uh, and uh, become a patron on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Thank you so much, guys. Much appreciated. Check out Patreon. And we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, we'll see you Friday night. Maybe we'll bring, bring back corrupted questions. how my voice was so broken there because i was sick i remember when i made this song like three years ago or f maybe four years ago but i was sick and i remember like how gurgly i sounded there Someone Corrupted questions Corrupted questions Corrupted questions You better ask them Corrupted questions Corrupted questions Did Soundwave try to say they got censored by Google? Tonight was a solid show, but man, for a final show on TNT, I was expecting more tonight. Everybody was so happy to see Junior back. I don't think anything made me laugh harder than Brandy calling herself a black. Yeah. 6.5, 10 wasn't special, but better than Raw. Yeah, it was definitely nice, man. Um, I, I like that you like Brandy, um... I I thought that part was 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 nice. I thought that her calling herself a black bitch was was funny. And, also, uh, I hate anything brown. Oh, Soundwave, that's not nice. Why would you say that? I mean, what the? <laughs> I don't I don't I do not condone that. What he just said. Um, <laughs> thank you, Soundwave, for the donation. But Jesus Christ, bro, I don't know. I want to reach Shell's pussy. Oh, come on, let's not. All right, Captain Big Ones, thank you for reading that for me. Um, the hearing impaired. Captain Big Ones has been a part of my channel for 10 years almost, so it's good to hear from him and, uh, you know, supporting me reading the donations. 
Uh, $29 turkeys ate us donation. That is the top dono of the stream so far. It's the only dono we played, actually, so far. And Soundwave92 is the top dog. You are the top supporter, Soundwave. Thank you. Hit that like button in the chat, guys. Even stick that thumb up my ass. And if you're brand new to my channel, you better be subscribing. All the playlists, I'm talking WWE, AEW, all that stuff, live calls, everything. Plus, we're on Patreon with all the content that we have. Um, I put up some audio the other day from the show. Hope you downloaded it, listened to it, whatever you want. You guys are big time. Matt Hardy looking like a used salad in that first match, but that's okay. It was a nice little match. I thought the opener was a nice opener. I thought the crowd at most times tonight was was really pretty good. There were a few times where the crowd kind of let it let it down a bit, you know, and it, and it is a smaller crowd. So, there, you know, it's outdoors. It's a smaller crowd. you got to remember this venue is a little bit tough. It's tough in this venue to get to that noise level when there's an open roof, it's an outside crowd, it's a small crowd. So, listen, it, you know, I think they did really pretty good tonight for being back to this lower crowd. I mean, what? I don't know how much Daly's Place holds. Isn't it like 5,000 people? Um, let's see. Now, to be fair, when they go on tour like they've been doing in the arenas, they've really only been selling out about 6,000 seats, right? They've been doing about 6,000 seats. Now, they say they sell out a lot at 10,000, 8,000, and things like that. But let's be honest. The attendance for AEW, wherever they go, tends to be around 5,000 or so. Sometimes four, sometimes six, but usually average 5,000. Well, Daly's Place has a capacity of 5,500. And I think that's about, a th I want to say it's about 1,000 less than what AEW's been doing every week. I think AEW has been reporting about six to 8,000 every week, and Daly's Place can only carry about 5,500. And that's before you put the wrestling ring in the middle of the crowd where seats usually are sold, I believe. Could be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. So I think their capacity is about 5,000. So that's my guess. I'm just guessing at stuff by looking at the seat charts. <laughs> That it's the capacity when, when AEW is there is only 5,000. I could be wrong, but that being said, that's not bad for an amphitheater. Any update on Jake DeMarco? Uh, what's up, John Wills? I I was about to end the stream, actually. But, I, yeah, dude, I, I mentioned it earlier that, uh, yeah, Jake's just dealing with the issues that he has and his, and his uh, family's issues, too. So he was going to return, actually, this week, he was hoping. But then he had a setback. So he's all right, but he's got a, he's got some stuff he's still got to get worked on. And um, then his family has an issue, too, that he's got to deal with that on top of it. So he's still dealing with that stuff. He's feeling He was feeling a little bit better until he had a little bit of a setback. and um, But he thinks that at some point, you know, he might be able to make an appearance or so coming up eventually. But I, I wouldn't. I would say that the likelihood of seeing Jake back in the next 30 days is less likely, but maybe in the next, maybe in February at some point we could see him stop back in, I believe, but I don't know 100%, but he, he's at least right now in decent enough spirits while still going through a lot. But yeah, that's basically it, John, man. Thank you. Only on the lower side when all things are considered, you know? Um, and, it, you know, it is what it is. S -s 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 Super Chat What's party. up, Chad? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Super Chats. Bullfrog on mental lul. Yeah, he's a mental case. Uh, drop a Super Chat, get super whack and fat. I'm going to sap that ass. Uh, thank you, Second City, saying, yeah, he's a psycho, I guess. I don't know. Um, I have some uh, clips uh, that you will enjoy uh, if you mean to be entertained. Christian Cage looking like a uh, looking like a snack, let me tell you that. Christian Cage, a big-time snack. Take some stabbing westward, take some nine-inch nails, take some gravity kills. <laughs> what is that chair about, dude? Let's listen to this. This is hilarious. Me. One of the biggest ratings draws in all of professional wrestling. Don't believe me? Google it. And today, we're going to talk about unsafe working conditions. You see, last week, I was thrown over the top rope with reckless abandonment by that untrained outlaw hack, Sting. Seriously, does anybody know who trained that guy? I don't. Yeah, because he wasn't. Mm -hmm. The man was revered when he should have been released. And I can assure you, 
If I was working for a much more professional wrestling company, things like this wouldn't happen to me, but I suppose that's a conversation that needs to be had as we get closer to the bidding war of 2024. CM Punk. <laughs> you claim you wanted a piece of me, you claim you're a man of the people, and yet the people want to see us go at it more than anything, and you refuse to give that to them. You stayed away from me the entire match like a <laughs> gutless coward. Well, guess what, Punky? I'm over it. You're yesterday's news. How great is it? Probably shouldn't have left that video up so long, but how great is it? Hopefully AW don't take me out. How great is it that MJF is still promoting this the great war, the great bidding war of 2024? I mean, dude, does it get any better than that when he constantly references how WWE is great and they're the professional company and that, that makes him a he bigger heel right there? I just love it, man. This is so brilliant. What he's doing is brilliant, absolutely brilliant stuff. Uh, from MJF, great decision, brilliant, love it, absolutely uh, a friggin', uh, I mean, this is to be cherished, you know what I mean, let's be honest, this is to be cherished, it was simply amazing promo stuff as always from MJF, I mean, that and that little, little goofy, uh, listen, I know some people will roll their eyes at these type of things, but for me, man, I, you know, I mark out a little bit and I go, ooh, I like that. Let's hear what you guys are saying in the donations. Thank you guys for supporting my channel and my show, as always. Um, I couldn't do this without you guys. Thanks for the support and keeping uh, my, my, uh, my show on the air with donations. I don't have any other means. Uh, but you guys. So thank you so much for that. Let's go to your comments. Oh. Motherfucker, here we go. Everyone knows I'm out the window. Yep. Yo. Yo. Motherfucker, no oh, romance. Shit. Cause there ain't no chance in my happy pants. Could you perchance come and take this? The, oh dance? my God, the great Riff Reaper. Reaper. Bad motherfucker ain't got no fear. What the time was the time, motherfucker? Time, motherfucker. Yo, put, put it in a happy rhyme, motherfucker. I say it's clock a clock. Bang bang tick tock in a fucking sock. Oil shock. Two on cause I'm a one in stock. What's the time, motherfucker? Say clock a clock. I say clock a clock. Love you, Joe. I'm sorry, but P Roach ripped your song. <laughs> 